Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd. Today we're going to be looking at the Beretta 84F Cheetah. Wow, wow, wow. Gotta really hate doing that. All right, so uh, we got another Cheetah to look at here. Um, this one I wanted to hurry up and get out so you guys can get an idea of what AIM Surplus is currently offering. And by current, um, this was ordered early May of 2023. Like I said, from AIM Surplus for five hundred dollars um now first of all what exactly is this well this is the bread 84 of the bread 80 series and that means it is going to be chambered in 380 and is going to be the double stack model now you've seen me review the 85 which is essentially the same gun but a single stack version therefore the grip is slimmer um, and a lot of people might be like, well, why would you want this? Why should you get this? A lot of people kind of get frustrated because, like, this is too heavy for a carry gun. Um, it's too large for a carry gun, etc., etc. And while this can be easily used as a carry gun or a concealed gun, I don't really, to me, think that is the main market for this gun. Really, I think what this market, this gun is marketed towards are people with smaller hands and female shooters. Now this gun is kind of getting reborn as the Beretta 80X Cheetah. Um, that is basically this gun evolved a little bit further and Beretta is just straight up advertising that to the female market. Now it's not because it's a little purse gun and it's you know easy to handle and not any recoil, but it's because it's a smaller framed gun. And it is kind of right in between that full size gun um, and kind of a compact gun, which like I said, you can use this as a carry. Is it the best carry? No, not necessarily. So this is really what I think is the best gun for someone with just smaller hands, which I do have smaller hands. Um, and so this is a great range gun. These are also great little guns for first time shooters. I've got a original 81, which is essentially the same gun, but chambered in 32 ACP. Um, so you can imagine with this nice wide grip in 32, uh, how great that gun is and these are actually pretty sweet little shooters um, I will admit when I first purchased this I was intending on carrying it. This is the 85 the single stack I wasn't the greatest shot with it. So I didn't really end up shooting it that much eventually got a Glock 43 to carry um, Took this back out with me and I all of a sudden was a great shot with this and kind of Has stirred up my love for these little cheetahs again like I said, they're great little shooters. They're very well built. They have very nice triggers. The slides do tend to be pretty stiff on racking them back. Um, it is worth noting that they did make a tip-up barrel version, um, which EAA is now importing a like Turkish copy version of that. Um, but anyways, so that's what I think the gun is really marketed for, is just being that someone, a shooter with smaller hands. Um, and like I said, this version is the double stack. This is 13 plus one. You do have a single stack version. I'll get my one with wood grips right here. This is an 85 BB. Um, so you can see it's not a huge difference, um, but they are slimmer. And then of course, if you were to put some lock grips on your single stack, like I did with this guy here, thins it out quite a bit. Like I said, this is 13 plus one with that double stack mag. Another thing people will often ask is, oh, this is a great little gun, but I want one in 9mm. Why is this in 9mm and not 380? A lot of people look at this and just think it's a all-around scaled-down version of the 92. While, yes, it very much does look like a scaled-down 92, it is not a scaled-down 92. The trigger mechanisms are very similar. They do have that open-top slide, which Brett has done for a long time since before the 92. But your 92 has lugs. And we can see those drop out of the way here. You can even see the barrel get pulled back some. This is all a design that, well, to be honest, Brett is stole from Walter. Now, the 80 series guns, they do not have lugs. You can see when I pull that back, the barrel does not come back. Well, the barrel is not actually pinned to the frame. It, it, once it's fully assembled, it is fixed into the frame. And this is purely a blowback action gun. So blowback in 380, while it's not uncomfortable for a 380, some might be like, oh, that's a little snappier than I anticipated. Um, definitely would not be fun in nine millimeter. Now, Beretta does make like subcompact versions of the 92 and some that are single stack. 
And that's basically that market there. So the reason you don't see these in, you know, 9mm Parabellum and just 380 or 9 short um, is because of the operating system because it is direct blowback. Now these guns did go through a lot of changes. You would start out with the original series. So the original version of this would simply just be the 84. Like how we have just an 81 here. That would evolve on to the B, the BB, the F that we have here, and then the final version, or what once was the final version, the FS. And like I said, now uh, with Brett inter introducing the 80X Cheetah, that's kind of the um, next version um, of this gun here. Now I do have the single stack BB version of this gun. This is an 80 BB. This is the 84 F. And these two changes right here kind of, that's a big difference in the evolution of this gun. BB and everything before it had a blued finished slide, had a black anodized frame. You'd have a more classic curved trigger guard. Whereas the F and the FS uh, they got away from the bluing and the anodizing and just use, I forget Breda's little special name for this coating, but it's kind of more of a flat black painted on um, type of finish. We have that more quote unquote tactical squared off trigger guard. Um, also the F and the FS have a chrome lined barrel, whereas the all the ones before that do not. And throughout the evolution of these models, they did thicken up the slides a little bit. They did thicken up the barrels a little bit. Um, add additional serrations and stuff like that as well. The other big difference on these two guns, and these are kind of like if you're trying to decide what model you want to get, these are the this is the big one here. And that question is, do you want to be able to carry it with the hammer back and the safety on? Or would you rather have a decocker? So the F and the FS you cannot carry with the hammer back and the safety on. Which brings me to another point, and that's the safety. I discovered this with my 85, and I've seen videos where people talk about how this is a safety notch, and maybe in the FS it is, um, but the two models that I have, uh, the, the second position of the safety is not an actual safety. Now, clicking that up, it's kind of covering the, uh, the little red on the safety, one would assume that that is a safety, but it is not. Now, I j literally just got in watching a video on a guy that had just purchased the new 80X Cheetah. And I've been very curious as to whether or not those have an in-between safety, because I have some, seen some people mention that it does. Um, and I don't know if they're just getting it on that, you know, this spot here and not bothering to, you know, point it down range and test it. Um, but I did come across a video of a guy showing his. Now, when he put it in the spot and pulled the trigger, nothing happened. But he said if he pushed like on one side of the trigger and pulled back, the hammer would drop. And he actually tested that at the range, and the gun did fire. So whether or not this is supposed to be a safety spot on the new 80X, I do not know. But I do know on the F and the, or at least the F, because that's the two versions that I have, it appears to be a safety but it is not at all a safety. Um, and yeah, just so you guys know, everything has been safety check that's out on the table. But you can see this one does the same thing. And so, yeah, I, I definitely want to put that out there for you guys. Um, definitely test that at the range with a pointed, you know, downrange. Do not just assume that's a safety. But that's the other big difference between the BB and the F is whether you want to be able to carry it with a hammer back and the safety on or if you want a decocker. Now, like I said, none of these guns, for me, I really intend to carry. I mean, obviously, yes, I did purchase this one as, you know, intending to carry. It still finds its way into my rotation occasionally. I'm sure this guy will too. Um, but for the most part, these are shooters for me. So it doesn't matter too much. Now, in a situation where I am going to be using the gun regularly for self-defense or carrying or whatever, I personally would prefer the decocker. So when I did purchase this, AIM Surplus also did have the BB version, which, like I said, is this, just with the double stack. Um, 
and it was the same price. Now, they did not have any listing as to, like, what these guns were graded in, so I was a little concerned on that. Um, especially when I zoomed in on the picture of the 84F that they had. The front section of the slide here, like, all that exposed, the bluing or the coating was completely gone. It was just white metal. Um, so definitely heavily, heavily worn. When I zoomed in on the grips, they were very, very beat up. Now, these grips are not bad out of the three different plastic grips that they offered on these. These are the final version. And honestly, they're really not that bad at all. But after putting a set of lock grips on my 85, I'm definitely getting um, a set of lock grips for this guy as well. So I do plan on changing those out. But still, the condition of the grips is going to give you an overall idea of you know how beat up the gun is how much hell it's gone through so when i went and picked this up for my ffl which was centerfire shooting sports in olathe um i was very happy to see the overall condition of this now right on our little takedown pin it is completely worn there got a few little spots here and there which you know like i said i was very 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 happy with the overall condition that this turned out to be and you got a pretty good spot right there as well, but that's not too bad at all. I'll probably get some uh, Luma Blue or Luma Black, whatever it's called, and try using that to touch up. I have not used that, but we will see how good that is. Uh, imported by Century Arms International. They did put the import mark on the bottom of the trigger guard, which makes me happy. Now, my BB, this one was actually imported by Beretta USA, um, so that line kind of blends in very well there to that was a nice one. The 85F R guns, I mean, it's, it's a well done import mark. It's, but it kind of makes it look like an airsoft gun or something. It's, I don't know, that one's weird. Um, and then my 81, that was PW Arms. And they put this on the bottom of the trigger guard as well, but they did a little bit better job at the quality of the stamping or laser etching, whatever you want to call it. Also just generally, <laughs> lining it up that one's a little crooked but like i said it's honestly not a big deal to me at all there so i'm just happy it's on the bottom of the trigger guard now the other cheetahs that i have i know where they came from the 81 was an ex parison guard pistol from italy um there's countless videos on these on youtube you can see there it has a cat 4 number um, some people will say that's how you're able to tell it's a prison guard pistol. Other people say no. Um, I do know on the bread of forms that we've got a big list of serial numbers. A lot of times the serial number can kind of tell you if it was meant for a specific police department or not. That is how I know this one here uh, was actually intended for the uh, Cabarini, Carbini, the police, which are technically part of the Cabarini, at least are technically part of the military, which you will also notice they PM marking on there for the uh, particle and magnaflex testing so that was pretty cool and then the 85 bb once again this serial number will tell you it belongs to the guardia di finanza as well as the gf that's stamped right there this one however it does have a cat number right there it is what we've got 5802 um couldn't really find any information on this along with the serial number. So this, like I said, was advertised as being surplus. It could have been surplus just for a, a municipal a Italian police department. It could have come out of Israel. They didn't even say if it was an Italian surplus. So a lot of countries have used this for their police. So really, who knows where the heck this thing came from. So that's one kind of bummer thing. At least as of now, I've kind of run into a dead end. Um, on figuring out who had this gun before me. Hopefully I might be able to find some information. Another thing when I first got this gun, like I said, it was in great shape, but holy cow, was it gunky. I cannot believe that the outside was as in good of shape as it was for being as dirty as it was. When I went to go take this down, I could barely get the takedown lever to switch down. Like I kind of fully accepted I'm going to have to take this to a gunsmith now. Um, but I just kind of sprayed some CLP around here. Kind of let it soak in. When I first got this, I'd push up the release. And you can see now it's returning on its own. But before I'd push it up, and it would just stay up, and I'd have to push it down from this side. 
Um, eventually, I was able to get the slide off. And it was just like a really fine, gritty mud that was just slapped all over on the inside of this thing. I mean, this thing was crazy dirty um, on the inside. Another thing I noticed, you can kind of see the back of the slide lock. It looks like it's a little chewed up there. So, not sure what happened there, but you can see on my single stack here, it's not like that at all. Um, I have not had the chance to shoot this gun yet. It does, however, appear to be, you know, operating in perfectly good fashion. Um, so, I don't expect there to be any issues. I do fully expect to get a completely speckled hand of grime and stuff. I'm going to clean this out a lot more. The other thing is... Yeah, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear this. I'll put it up to the mic. It, it feels a lot better, so it's probably nothing coming across in the sound there. But that was the safety. And when I first got this, I mean, it was just the feeling of sand <laughs> in there. Like I said, I, I sprayed this back section a whole bunch with COP and kind of um, sat it upside down for a few hours, let all that stuff kind of just naturally soak in there and clean out as much as possible. Um, it was just like this gun was just shot a whole bunch and then just put up. And never like, and when I say shot a bunch, I mean shot a bunch. It was filthy. One thing that threw me off is the crown. You can kind of see that chrome lining on the barrel there. When I first got this, I was looking at that and I was like, oh man, has this barrel been replaced with a non chrome lined one? Um, but no, it was just super dirty. I don't think this gun has ever been cleaned in its life, like ever. So, um, but other than that, I'm still happy with it because it's in great shape. So, two things we need to do is one, we'll weigh it see where it comes in on the scales we'll pull out our cheapest digital scales we can find on Amazon for you guys so with the mag it is an empty mag but we are coming in at 24.3 ounces oh I just messed it up but it's 24.3 now it's 24.2 so we'll just go ahead and say it weighs with an empty mag just a hair over 24 ounces. Now just for what the heck sakes, we do have the single stack version out here. Um, of course, this does have the lock grips on there. Um, and this guy is weighing in at 23.6 ounces with an empty mag. So not much of a change. Obviously, a little bit more of a change in weight if you were to load the mags. But there's that for you guys. Next, let's check out this trigger pull. Now, traditionally with my other cheetahs, absolutely amazing double action and single action triggers. Um, I would normally say I don't expect any less from this, but I do expect a little less because like I said, it is super grimy. And I've just kind of sprayed the inside of the frame like twice with CLP to kind of try to clear stuff out. So, I would imagine that this... Um, trigger will get better with you know some shooting and cleaning so I will do the double stack like I've done the other the 85 um, I'm going to decock it so normally this hammer I can kind of show you can't go down all the way so when you're doing double action you're getting a little bit more pull on it but if you were to carry this you'd have it decocked but the hammer is resting off this uh, firing pin um, so I imagine that might affect the trigger weight a little bit, but that's where we're going to take it from. All right. So double action. We'll do five pulls. 6.12 ounces. Six point seven ounces. Just a hair over six ounces. I've lost count. Was that four? I think that was four. 5.9 ounces. So our average six pounds, 3.5 ounces for the double action trigger pull. So not bad there at all. Um, also, the reset. 
not too far out. It does have an audible click. And right now it feels a little mushy. I don't feel grime, like not grime from like the dirt. This is more mush, so I don't know if that will clean up any with usage and cleaning. But let's test the single action. Two pounds, 15 ounces. Three pounds, one ounce. Ow. That was my thumb. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're going to start over on that one since I goofed that up. Oy vey. All right. We'll get this eventually. going to be quiet and get this done this time. Ooh, that was nice. Is this five? Dang. Average, two pounds, 12 ounces. I cannot complain. My thumb might a little bit, but I cannot complain. So there is our trigger pull on that. Um, thank you, trigger pull gauge. Like I said, overall, I'm very happy with this. Um, the overall condition really is amazing. I have been wanting to get one of these for a while. However, they just kind of kept eluding me. Not that they're difficult to find at all. <laughs> they're actually quite common, but it just seemed like every time I was like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get one. They were gone and out of stock for quite a while. So, yeah, wanted to go ahead and finally pull the trigger on this. Also, it's worth noting that there is another contender, if you're thinking about getting one of these, that you should definitely consider. And that is the CZ83, same caliber. Um, I'm not going to ruin anything, but I'm definitely going to be doing a comparison video on these two guns because they are very, very much alike. It is also worth pointing out you can get Metgar mags for these. Uh, I think those are anywhere from like $25 to $35 depending if you get one with a blued finish or get one with a nickel finish, um, but those definitely are still available. Also, guys, um, I don't want to forget to let you know. I am on Rumble. Um, don't really have any exclusive content, at least as of right now, on Rumble. It's more or less just kind of a backup. YouTube got a little crazy with some of the um, gun pages. And so I wanted to go ahead and have my information out there somewhere else um, and not lost forever. Also, um, sometimes I like to take pretty pictures of my guns. And I would like you guys to check out my pretty pictures of my guns. So please consider following my Instagram page. Um, started that not too long ago and been spitting out a bunch of old pictures I've taken of my guns. Some of them I am pretty proud of. Um, so yeah, give me a, a like and a follow over there, if you will. And then the last thing about these guns, if you are very interested and curious about the Breda 80 series, definitely go check out Lucky Gunner. Um, they have a really great and really thorough video on these Breda 80 series. And they do a really good job of breaking down all the different models um, and the differences therein. So if you're in interested in these guns, definitely go check out their channel. They have a great video on these. So that is it, guys. That's all I've got for you today. Um, if you did like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. And of course, as always, stay safe and stay shiny.